Hola, today it's story time with Álvaro. We all learned our native language as children, so why not revisit children's stories when we are adults and learning a new language? Why? Because they are easy to understand as they use simple language and we all know the stories because we have heard them a million times. So I hope you enjoy! I've structured this in three different parts. So the first one is going to be keywords or key vocabulary that you need to know to be able to understand the story as much as you can. Why? Because the second part is going to be me reading the whole story only in Spanish. So you will definitely need those words. And the third part, it's going to be me reading it in English and then Spanish so you can hear all the fully translations from the story. Uh, the books that I'm using, and this is not a promotional video, but the books that I use are the Brighter Child Keepsake Story Collection, English to Spanish. I actually use them as well with my students, but as I said, this is not a promo. <laughs> I just really like them. And I will leave the links in the description below if anyone wants to follow along. Today's story is going to be Los Tres Cerditos, The Three Little Pigs. So the first part is going to be the keywords or the key vocabulary that you need to understand or learn for the second part. So let's begin. So we have cerdo, it's pig. Cerdito, little pig. Lobo, wolf. Verano, summer. Otoño, autumn. Invierno, winter. Casa, house. Construir, to build. Paja, straw. Palos, sticks. Ladrillo, bricks. Well, ladrillos, bricks. Uh, primer, first. Segundo, second. Tercer, third. Entrar, to get in or to come in. Soplar, to blow. Derrumbar, to destroy or to knock down. Um, fuego, fire. Chimenea, chimney, and cola, tail. Right, so let's begin with the second part, which is me reading the whole story only in Spanish. So I hope you have noted down those key words that I said to you in the first part, because you will need them to understand this. Let's begin. Había una vez tres cerditos que deseaban explorar el mundo entero. Una mañana de verano, salieron juntos. Los tres cerditos disfrutaban de estar solos. Compartían meriendas y jugaban al escondite con sus nuevos amigos. Poco después, los vientos de otoño comenzaron a soplar. Los cerditos sabían que necesitarían una casa cálida y segura durante el invierno. Los cerditos decidieron que cada uno construiría su propia casa. El primer cerdito agarró la primera cosa que vio, paja de un campo cercano, y comenzó a trabajar. El primer cerdito construyó su casa rápidamente, sin planear mucho. Los otros dos cerditos pensaron que una casa de paja no sería lo suficientemente fuerte. El segundo cerdito pensó que palos podrían ser más fuertes que la paja. Recogió los mejores palos que pudo encontrar y construyó un armazón con los palos largos. Luego ató palos al armazón para hacer las paredes. El segundo cerdito estaba muy feliz con su nueva casa. El tercer cerdito todavía no estaba seguro de que los palos serían lo suficientemente fuertes. Pensó que los ladrillos harían una casa buena y resistente. El tercer cerdito comenzó a trabajar. Después de mucho tiempo terminó su casa de ladrillo. Estaba bastante feliz con ella. Los otros dos cerditos no estaban seguros 
de que la casa de ladrillo valiera la pena tanto trabajo. Un día, mientras los tres cerditos jugaban, encontraron unas huellas de lobo. Sabían que el lobo estaba cerca, así que corrieron a sus casas y cerraron muy bien con llave. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta del primer cerdito. Cerdito, cerdito, déjame entrar, dijo el lobo. No, gritó el primer cerdito, por nada del mundo te dejaré entrar. Entonces soplaré y soplaré y la casa derrumbaré, gritó el lobo. Y con un poderoso soplido, el lobo derrumbó la casa de paja. El primer cerdito corrió a la casa del segundo cerdito. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta. Cerditos, cerditos, déjenme entrar, dijo el lobo. No, gritaron los cerditos, por nada del mundo te dejaremos entrar. Entonces soplaré y soplaré y la casa derrumbaré, gritó el lobo. Y con un gran soplido, el lobo derrumbó la casa de palos. Los dos cerditos corrieron a la casa de ladrillo. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta. ¡Cerditos, cerditos, déjenme entrar! dijo el lobo. ¡No! gritaron al tiempo los cerditos. ¡Por nada del mundo te dejaremos entrar! Entonces, soplaré y soplaré y la casa derrumbaré, gritó el lobo. El lobo trató y trató, pero no pudo derrumbar la casa de ladrillos. Al lobo se le ocurrió un nuevo plan. Los tres cerditos se preguntaban qué podría hacer. Así que prendieron el fuego a la chimenea. El lobo bajó por la chimenea. Antes de llegar al fondo, su cola prendió fuego. El lobo se alejó corriendo despavorido. Los tres cerditos se pararon frente a la resistente casa de ladrillo mientras miraban al lobo desaparecer. Nunca lo volvieron a ver. Los cerditos vivieron felices para siempre. Ok, so now that we have seen all of the story in Spanish, let's go page by page and try to like go into more depth of each paragraph in each page and try to figure out what structures are we using because some of the words, for example, in these in these books, in these uh, Brother Child uh, books, they use Latin American words that I have changed into Spanish from Spain words. But I will be telling you which ones are specifically the, the ones. So if you buy the books, you know that I have changed some of those words so you don't get confused if you're reading them with me and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't say that in here. So that was my fault. <laughs> so let's begin now with the third part, which is me reading them in English and then Spanish. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They were very curious about the big wide world. One summer morning, they set off together. So in this paragraph, we had había una vez tres cerditos que deseaban explorar el mundo entero. Una mañana de verano salieron juntos. I would personally translate that as Once upon a time there were three little pigs that wished to explore the world, the, well, the entire world. And a summer morning they set off together. The three little pigs enjoyed being on their own. They shared picnics. They played hide and seek with their new friends. In this paragraph, literally said in here, it says, Los tres cerditos disfrutaban de estar solos, compartían meriendas, jugaban a las escondidas con sus nuevos amigos. So, the three little pigs, they enjoyed being on their own. They shared meriendas, it's not really picnics, meriendas, it's what we have in Spain and probably as well Latin America, which is like the mid midday snack. Well, no, it's not midday, it's midnight snack. Between lunch and dinner, we have something that is called merienda, which it could be like a picnic, but we have meriendas at our house or our homes. We don't go picnics for meriendas. <laughs> and then 
jugaban a las escondidas. Right, when I read this the first, the second part, uh, I said al escondite. Because I'm quite sure Spanish from Spain we say escondite as in hide and seek. And escondidas, I'm sure it's used in Latin America. But I've changed that to escondite because that's the one that I use. Escondidas to me sounds weird. <laughs> And then, con sus nuevos amigos, with their new friends. That's fine. Soon, the fall winds began to blow. The pigs knew they would need a warm, safe house for the winter. Poco después, los vientos de otoño comenzaron a soplar. Los cerditos sabían que necesitarían una casa cálida y segura durante el invierno. The pigs decided they would each build their own house. The first little pig grabbed the first thing he saw, some straw from a nearby field, and began to work. Los cerditos decidieron que cada uno construiría su propia casa. El primer cerdito agarró la primera cosa que vio, paja de un campo cercano, y comenzó a trabajar. The first little pig built his house quickly, without much planning. The other two pigs thought the house of straw might not be strong enough. El primer cerdito construyó su casa rápidamente, sin planear mucho. Los otros dos cerditos pensaron que una casa de paja no sería lo suficientemente fuerte. The second little pig thought sticks might be stronger than straw. He gathered the best sticks he could find. El segundo cerdito pensó que palos podrían ser más fuertes que la paja. Recogió los mejores palos que pudo encontrar. Now, in this paragraph, so, I have always learned this story as a house made of wood, which we say madera, casa de madera, house of wood. Wood. Uh, but in this book they are using sticks, that's why they are using palos. Palos eat sticks. But just as a curiosity, I've always learned it as madera, wood. He made a frame from the long sticks. Then he tied sticks to the frame to make walls. Construyó un armazón con los palos largos. Luego ató palos al armazón para hacer las paredes. In this paragraph, for example, is using armazón as frame. I would personally use estructura, like structure. He built a structure from which he kept, he kept building the walls. I personally wouldn't use the word armazón. That, it doesn't sound right to me to use. Like, so I would say, construyó una estructura con los palos largos, as in he made a frame from the long sticks. The second little pig was very happy with his new house. The third little pig still was not sure that sticks would be strong enough. He thought that bricks would make a good sturdy house. And we all know that he thought really well. That's not in the book. <laughs> El segundo cerdito estaba muy feliz con su casa nueva. El tercer cerdito todavía no estaba seguro de que los palos serían suficientemente fuertes. Pensó que los ladrillos harían una casa buena y resistente. The third little pig began to work. After a long time, he finished his brick house. He was quite happy with it. The two other little pigs were not sure that the brick house was worth all that hard work. El tercer cerdito comenzó a trabajar. Después de mucho tiempo, terminó su casa de ladrillo. Estaba bastante feliz con ella. Los otros dos cerditos no estaban seguros de que la casa de ladrillo valiera la pena tanto trabajo. While the three little pigs were playing one day, they came across some wolf tracks. They knew the wolf was near, so they ran to their homes and locked their houses up tight. 
Un día, mientras los tres cerditos jugaban, encontraron unas huellas de lobo. Sabían que el lobo estaba cerca, así que corrieron a sus casas y cerraron muy bien con llave. Now, in this paragraph, it says in English, lock the house up tight. Now, that is not literally translated into Spanish because tight wouldn't be llave. So, llave, it means key. So, when we say cerraron muy bien con llave, it's they locked very well or very, yeah, very good with a key or with key. They locked with key, <laughs> the door of their house, basically. Soon, the wolf knocked on the door of the first little pig's house. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta de la casa del primer cerdito. Now, in this sentence, tocó is as knocked. Now, we, we can say tocó, that's, that's fine, that's come from the, the verb tocar, but don't get it confused because tocar, it means as well to touch. So, I'm touching the book, estoy tocando. Or in the past, tocó. El lobo, imagine, uh, it's not me, it's the wolf tocó el libro. So the wolf touched the, the book. Uh, but we use it as well for knocking the door, not knocking out, like knocking as in calling someone. Just don't confuse the verb tocó because it can be used in many different contexts. <clears throat> little pig, little pig, let me come in, said the wolf. No, cried the first little pig, not by the hair of my teeny chin chin. Cerdito, cerdito, déjame entrar, dijo el lobo. No, gritó el primer cerdito, por nada del mundo te dejaré entrar. Now, obviously this is translated different, because when I read this in English, I was like, what on earth? It means not by the hair of my teeny chin chin. I guess it's meaning the hair of the chin, but like, I did not know that the pigs had hair in the chin, in the chin. So to me, it makes no sense reading this. Uh, if I literally translate in English, uh, what we say in Spanish is, cerdito, cerdito, déjame entrar, dijo el lobo. So little pig, little pig, let me come in, said the wolf. No, gritó el primer cerdito, no. Shouted, it's not cried like in English says because grito is not cried, grito is shouted. So, no, shouted the first little pig. Por nada del mundo te dejaré entrar. So, for nothing of the world, of, there's nothing in this world that will, that I will let you in. So, por nada, for nothing of the world, del mundo, te dejaré entrar. I will let you in. So, there's Nothing with hairs and with teeny chin chin different. So be careful with literally translations. <laughs> then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in, shouted the wolf. And with a mighty blow, the wolf blew down the house of straw. Entonces soplaré y resoplaré, resoplaré, y la casa derrumbaré. Gritó el lobo, y con un poderoso soplo, el lobo derrumbó la casa de paja. Now, in here we have, we have many things in only two lines. So, again, I will huff and I will puff. I don't really understand that because I don't know if huff and puff is, is the same as in Spanish. I don't think so. Um, but in Spanish what we say is, entonces, then, soplaré... In the book says resoplaré, which is I will blow again. So soplaréis, I will blow. Resoplaréis, I will re-blow again. Y la casa derrumbaré, and I will knock your house down. We don't say you blow your house in. To me, that sounds weird, to blow the house in. Where? Uh, so, in my case, when I read this the first time, I said, Entonces, soplaré y soplaré, because that's how I learned it as a kid. So I didn't learn it as resoplaré. So I say, Entonces, soplaré y soplaré, y la casa derrumbaré. And then, I will blow when I will blow, and the house I will knock down. <laughs> Gritó el lobo, shouted the wolf. 
y con un poderoso soplo, in the book says soplo, as a mighty blow, I would say soplido. Soplido, it's to me what translates as blow. Now, soplo is correct as well, but I guess, I don't know if this is Latin American Spanish against Spanish from Spain, Spanish, maybe it's that. But that's why I read it as y con un poderoso soplido. But if you get the book, it says soplo. El lobo derrumbó la casa de paja. The wolf blew down or broke or knocked down the, the straw house, the house of straw. The first pig ran to the second pig's house. Soon the wolf knocked on the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in, said the wolf. No, cried the pigs, not by the hair of our teeny chin chins. El primer cerdito corrió a la casa del segundo cerdito. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta. Cerditos, cerditos, déjenme entrar, dijo el lobo. No, gritaron los cerditos, por nada del mundo te dejaremos entrar. Again, the same expressions that you guys say of hair of our chinny chin chins. Be careful because it's not literally translated. And now, instead of déjenme entrar, <clears throat> I would personally use dejadme entrar. Because déjenme entrar, déjenme, it's correct. But it's like the formal way of saying let me in. So déjenme entrar is please let me in or let me in. Now, the wolf is trying to eat the pigs. Why would he be respectful? Why would he be like using the formal way? So I would personally use dejadme entrar, which is let me in, but like as an order. Let me in because I'm gonna eat you because I'm a wolf and you're pigs. Like, I don't know why the wolf is trying to be now all formal and like all, hey, I'm gonna treat you well until I go to you in and like then I will eat, eat you. Like, I don't understand why it's using the formal way, but anyway. <laughs> Explanation. <laughs> then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in, shouted the wolf. And with a great breath, the wolf blew down the house of sticks. Entonces soplaré y soplaré y la casa derrumbaré, gritó el lobo. Y con un gran soplo, soplido, el lobo derrumbó la casa de palos. The two little pigs ran to the brick house. Soon, the wolf knocked on the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in, said the wolf. No, shouted the pigs together. Not by the hair of our teeny chin chins. I cannot not laugh when I read that, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I can't wait to read more kids' stories in English. Los dos cerditos corrieron a la casa de ladrillo. Pronto, el lobo tocó a la puerta. Cerditos, cerditos, dejadme entrar, dijo el lobo. No, gritaron al tiempo los cerditos. Por nada del mundo te dejaremos entrar. As you can see, I already changed. It says déjenme, but I'm sorry, I can't read the wolf being all formal when he wants to eat the, the pigs. So I'm not going to use déjenme. It's dejadme. Let me in. I said so. Then I will huff and I will puff and I will blow your house in shouted the wolf. The wolf tried and tried, he could not blow down the house of bricks. Entonces, soplaré y soplaré y la casa derrumbaré, gritó el lobo. El lobo trató y trató, pero no pudo derrumbar la casa de ladrillos. The wolf came up with a new plan. The three little pigs guessed what he might do, so they lit a fire in the fireplace. Al lobo se le ocurrió un nuevo plan. Los tres cerditos se preguntaban qué podría hacer, así que prendieron el fuego en la chimenea. Now, in this one. So, we have fireplace uh, in the English version. Now, in Spanish we have chimenea. Chimenea means chimney, so I don't know what it said fireplace, I guess that's the way you guys say instead of chimney? Do you use chimney? Yeah, possession. Okay, well, this, I, I'm sorry, but it's a little bit confusing then for like, if people try to literally translate, they should have just said chimney. Uh, so yeah, fireplace, 
we don't really have a word for that in Spanish because if, if I literally translate fireplace, lugar del fuego, that sounds so, no, that's wrong, don't say that. So, chimenea, chimney. And the rest, I'm quite sure, yeah, the rest is all fine. So, let's keep going. The wolf climbed down the chimney before he reached the bottom, his tail caught fire. El lobo bajó por la chimenea Antes de llegar al fondo, su cola prendió fuego. The wolf raced away in a panic. The three little pigs stood in front of the sturdy brick house as they watched the wolf disappear. The wolf was never seen again. The pigs lived happily ever after. El lobo se alejó corriendo despavorido. Los tres cerditos se pararon frente a la resistente casa de ladrillo mientras miraban al lobo desaparecer. Nunca lo volvieron a ver. Los cerditos vivieron felices para siempre. Now in this one, in the English version says raised. In the Spanish one, alejó, it literally doesn't mean that. Raised to me is a race, uh, una carrera. Carrera is race. Alejó is just running away or like he escaped or just, yeah, just run away, but not really, do you say race away or run away? Yeah, you can say race away. Race away? Oh, okay. Well, that's a new <laughs> word for me to learn in this context. Uh, but yeah, I would say alejó doesn't mean raced away. Alejó is just, he got away. He, yeah, run away if you say it's race away, the same. Okay. And um, then the oh well, the one to know and the one to uh, learn for these kind of stories for that when we do the future videos is the happily ever after. We always say vivieron felices para siempre. Vivieron lived felices happy para siempre for always forever. So happily ever after, felices para siempre. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have learned loads of vocabulary. You can obviously rewatch the video as many times as you want. You can go through the first part, the second. So the first part, remember the vocabulary, note them down, and then try to hear it again in Spanish until you can only hear it in Spanish and understand absolutely everything. Because obviously the keywords are those, are specifically the keywords, but you have loads more to learn in the whole story. So make sure you write down the vocabulary because that's the best way of learning a language. Just vocabulary, you need tons and tons and tons of vocabulary. I will never get tired of saying that to the students. Just learn loads. The grammar can come afterwards, but the vocabulary is the main thing. If you've enjoyed the video and you think it's a good way to learn the language, please comment below what's your favorite word that you have learned with this story. Every story time I will be asking what's your favorite new word of the vocabulary. So please comment it below, like it and share it, and I will see you in the next video, in the next story time. So hit the bell if you want to know when is it going to be. Bye, hasta luego.